Okay, before I start this video, I just thought I would show you guys the stacks of books I have because I just counted them all and it turns out I have accumulated 75 books over the course of the past four months. As you can see, it is absolute chaos on my dresser here and uh, I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> Hi friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylin and today I'm going to be going through all of the books I either bought, received, sought out this summer and there are 75 of them. I don't know how this happened. I did not intend for this to happen, possibly because I got a new shelf and I was able to fit more books than I thought I would and things escalated very quickly. Um, I'm not going to make this intro very long because I have so many books to get through. I'm also going to do my best not to ramble and explain like <laughs> the origins or reasons why I picked up every single book I'm showing. I'm just going to be saying the title, the author, and moving on as quickly as possible because there are just way too many books to show. Also, I just want to preface this video by saying 75 books is an absolute insane amount and this was not intentional <laughs> on my part and also the only reason I was able or even willing to get this many was because I am lucky enough to be close to a few used bookstores that sell books for like a dollar or 50 cents. Those are mostly like library sales or like used bookstores associated with the libraries around me and so that is the only way this became remotely possible. There are a few like new books I got and I will like I guess specify which ones are new but yeah most of these books I got for like a dollar and then most of the new ones I got for pretty discounted prices because I work at an independent bookstore and so I get a good discount there and that is the only reason <laughs> this happened in the first place. So with that being said now I can get started in showing you all of my books that I got. I'm going to start with the new books I got because that is by far the smallest stack and the first two I have here are The Tyrant's Tomb and The Tower of Nero which are the last two books in the Trials of Apollo series series by Rick Reardon. Still haven't read this, but these were the last two I needed to complete that series. Next, this is actually a used book, but I paid basically full price for it because it is a signed first edition of Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I found this at a used bookstore and I'm so happy I have it because I have God's Grave and Dark Dawn in these signed first editions too, and now I have Nevernight and I'm very happy about it. Next, this isn't new, but kind of new condition. I traded for a UK hardcover copy of Strange the Dreamer and it's beautiful. It has the blue sprayed edges and it is my my favorite thing I own, I think. And I also purchased the Lit Joy Crate Deluxe Editions of Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares. Also, I do want to say I know some of these books I've either hauled before or talked about before and I just like didn't have the willpower to like go through my videos and pick out which ones I've shown you before. So I'm just showing you like everything I've gotten this summer pretty much um, unless I know for sure it was featured in a past haul. So these are the two. I do have a video going through all of the features of these books in depth, but they're very beautiful. I love them a lot. Then I got The Tangle Root Palace by Marjorie Liu, The Lives of Saints by Lee Bardugo, Some Poetry, So What Kind of Woman by Kate Bear, and Dear Girl by Aisha Mayrock. Then I got The Atlas Six by Olive Blake. You can tell how much I love this book by how many tabs I have in it. Then I got Lore by Alexandra Bracken, Brown Breaker by Victoria Aveyard, Harleen by Stevjan Sejic. I can't pronounce that name, I'm sorry. Conversations with Friends and Normal People by Sally Rooney, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnes and to finish up the new books I got furthermore by Tahara Mafai. So those were all of the new books I purchased myself this summer. Um, it is quite a bit but like I said I do get discounts at my local bookstore um, and I try and look for deals where I can. Um, but now getting into the used books the first one I have is actually a duplicate <laughs> and that is again The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid except I got the hardcover. I found this for a dollar. I'm not gonna keep both I just haven't decided which cover I like more so I'm gonna see which version I like on my shelves more than eventually decide which one to keep. Then I got Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor which is book two of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. The Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman which was a really popular YA novel when it came out a long time ago. I don't know when exactly but I figured like if I'm ever in the mood for Victorian gothic vibes this is the book I can pick up. Then I got Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. The Twilight Saga, the official illustrated guide by Stephanie Meyer. So I've been like 
like really itching to reread Twilight soon, hopefully at some point. And I just, when I do that, I will have the illustrated guide to look back on. I don't know if I'll keep this, but I think it'll be fun to flip through for like nostalgia purposes. Then I got Outlander by Diana Gabaldon, then Magonia by Maria Devana Headley, The Black Prism by Brent Weeks, The Savage Song and Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab, The Thief by Megan Whalen Turner, The Giver by Lois Lowry. Then I got book three of Percy Jackson, The Titan's Curse. Um, I'm tracking down all of the hardcover editions so I can put these gorgeous nerdy ink dust jackets that I got. I have them in paperback, but I now have two of the books in hardcover and I'm looking for them used. So that's what the dust jacket is. It is the nerdy ink Percy Jackson recovered set. Then I got the entire Infernal Devices trilogy in paperback. I did already have this in paperback, but I had the UK editions and they were really like short and kind of like mass market paperbacky. And these are just like nice normal paperbacks in the US editions. Um, I think they were the UK editions I had. So I like these better. I'm just swapping them out. Then I got a series that I started when I was in elementary school, like third or fourth grade or something like that, but I never continued with. And I just saw the trilogy at a used bookstore and decided that it'd be fun to return to it. And those are the Land of Elyon books. And The Dark Hills Divide was the only book I read of the series, but now I have all three and I'm excited to like fly through the trilogy in like a day or something. And I think they'll be really fun. Then I got Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Then a very exciting find was the Barnes and Noble collectible edition of the Star Wars trilogy. Um, I used to have a Star Wars trilogy bind up from Borders back when Borders was a thing and I've been eyeing these ones. I do want the Princess Leia one, but the Darth Vader one is also really cool, and I like this a lot. <laughs> and as you can tell from some of these purchases, I've kind of been on a middle grade kick. I've been in the mood to read middle grade, even though I have yet to pick up a middle grade book, so I've just been buying them. But I got A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle, which I never read as a kid. I started it and didn't like it, but I want to go back to it because I feel like I would actually love this series, so I have book one. Then I got The Wonderling by Mira Bar talk and I don't know what this is about. I just really love the cover and the foiling and it looks really adorable so I figured I would read that when I want a middle grade. And then for similar purposes <laughs> I picked up Nightmares by Jason Siegel and Kristen Miller which again I kind of just fell for the cover and the foiling so yeah if they want a spooky middle grade <laughs> I have this one. Then I got Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller which is this very nice book of the month edition and the only reason this was on my radar at all <laughs> was because I read Lily Reinhardt's poetry collection which is also called Swimming Lessons and whenever I would search for that this book would come up and I saw it in a used bookstore and I read the synopsis and was actually very intrigued. I can read this probably next summer. It seems like a summery read to me even though it's actually kind of dark and sad but we'll see. Then I got a historical fiction which is Elizabeth the First by Margaret George and I actually have another one of her books Mary Queen of Scots which was one of my mom's actually but my mom thought it was a biography and she hasn't read it but the reason she had it is because she thought it was a biography because she doesn't read fiction um, and I've been interested in that and then I saw this and I just loved the cover. I think she wrote this one first so if I ever want <laughs> to tackle this really chunky historical fiction I have one. Um, the only other historical fiction on my shelves I think is The Book Thief, the Stalking Jack the Ripper series and there might be one more but I really don't read that a lot so this might be interesting to try. Then we have some classics as well as some fantasy classics which I will show first. I got The Hobbit and then Book Book two of Lord of the Rings. Oh, just kidding. This is The Inferno by Dante, but book two of Lord of the Rings is in the stack somewhere. Um, but I got The Hobbit because it matched the other editions of The Lord of the Rings that I had. And then I also found the Lord of the Rings book that I was missing, book two, which is right here. They just have similar <laughs> spine colors as The Inferno. Um, but these are the two. I really like this cover art illustration. So these are the editions I have. Then like I briefly showed before, I got Dante's Inferno, which is the Barnes and Noble uh, classics edition, which kind of matches is my modern library classics collection <laughs> that I have. So I liked that a lot. Then I picked up the basic writings of Nietzsche. Nietzsche I, I can't say <laughs> his name, but like the famous philosopher dude. There's my bookmark. Um, I started reading this and I figured this would be good for the times when I couldn't fall asleep. And so I would read this until I got exhausted enough and my brain got tired enough to go to sleep. And I've done it like a couple times <laughs> and it's worked so far. So that's how I'm planning to get through this. But I am interested in philosophy 
recipe so i saw this and i thought i would like to read it then i picked up dr jekyll and mr hyde by robert louise stevenson i read the children's illustrated classic edition of this but i figured it's about time i read the real one <laughs> um and i like this story so this will be good for halloween i think and then i found an edition of emma that i've been tracking down so long i've been wanting to find this two years now i think and it is the modern library classics because i love this spine i have like four other classics in these editions and i just love this cover so much it's so pretty so i'm very happy to have this and then i can finally now i can finally read it and watch the movie i'm very excited about that and next i have a few shakespeare plays i have folger library editions um i like that the font in these is pretty big and it has pretty like detailed explanations of what's going on and everything and so i have king lear Othello, macbeth and much ado about nothing and i've read king lear and macbeth but not Othello or much ado about nothing so i'm happy to have these for when i eventually take a shakespeare class at school because that will come <laughs> eventually so i have these and then this is very random but i got a spain travel book i found this in a used bookstore for eight dollars and usually travel books are pretty expensive like i think the list price is 25.99 <laughs> so this is a 2020 book really recent i know no one was traveling in 2020 which is probably why whoever had this got rid of it but i want to go to spain at some point and i figured this is recent enough so when i ever do go i have this and i don't have to buy a travel book and then next we have some very <laughs> exciting books for me and those are all skullduggery pleasant books to add to my skullduggery collection um the first one is a hardcover edition of playing with fire which i believe i think maybe the second u.s edition that came out and i just i love it so much um this cover is so fun i love the illustration so i was very excited to find it in a used bookstore and then i found i'm not sure if i've showed this one before i think i might have but i found an arc of skullduggery pleasant and it's just these are like 10 years old at this point maybe more and so i just love the fact that i have these um and then i got playing with fire which doesn't even have cover art on it and my skullduggery heart is so happy <laughs> to have these so um i have these two arcs which makes a grand total of three skullduggery arcs in my collection so that's really great for me <laughs> then i got another duplicate <laughs> which i don't really know why i just it, this is a book i love so much that i just felt a pull <laughs> to get it um so that is the storied life of aj fickery in hardback i first got it in paperback at another used bookstore and i love the paperback but the hardcover is also very pretty so i don't know which one i'm going to keep um i like them both i'll just put them in their places on my shelf and see which one speaks to me more and then i will just re-donate the other one so and then i got a, another v schwab book i got the near witch which happens to be the barnes and noble exclusive edition and um, i did not buy this new i got it from a used bookstore like i said uh but it's cool that i have <laughs> the bonus content this is actually my least favorite cover though i really like the red black white color scheme of her other books so if i like this enough i will probably track this down in a different edition that i like more and then i got the last two books of of the A Curse So Dark and Lonely, I think, <laughs> series um, by Bridget Kimmerer. These are like hardcovers in perfect condition and I got them for like $3 each. So I'm very excited about that. I have A Curse So Dark and Lonely on my Kindle so I can read that and then read these and decide if I want them physically for my collection. So I'm excited about that. I think these will be good fall reads. And then I got the entire Chronicles of the One trilogy by Nora Roberts. Um, again, these are just like really pretty, perfect condition hardcovers. And Nora Roberts is an author that like really intrigues me just like because of the sheer volume of the works she has out. Like she fills entire bookshelves in stores and that just is very impressive to me. Um, so I've never read any of her books, but I like these covers. <laughs> They're like very, pretty hard covers so yeah i don't know at all what this series is about but i like the look of them and now i can binge them if i so choose oh and then the next book i have to show is one i should have shown with my other skullduggery books but i got this one new so that is skullduggery pleasant the grimoire which is from what i understand like a bind up of all of the skullduggery info out there like i think it has short stories and maybe some like little novellas and also like information on all the characters and it's just like a guide so um obviously i had to have it but there are spoilers in here for the books that i haven't read yet so i won't be able to look at this until i 
like catch up with the series, but hopefully I'll do that soon. I'm just excited to have it uh, waiting for me <laughs> for when I get to that point. And then I have another duplicate here. I have this edition of Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson, The Final Empire. So this is the UK version and I have one of the US versions, but I just like this kind, um, this cover style a lot. So I might continue with the rest of his books in these versions if I like them enough, um, which I think I will. I have a really good feeling about his books. Um, so yeah, I got this just to start me off in case I wanted to get the rest of his books. This was like 50 cents, so I decided why not. And then finally for books I got used, I have The Dark Artifices book three by Cassandra Clare, um, Queen of Air and Darkness. This is just as big as my face um, and it's <laughs> so long, but I, I plan to dive into Cassie Clare at some point. I've been saying that at this point for so, so long, but I'm going to do it eventually. So I have whole Dark Artifices trilogy, the whole Infernal Devices trilogy, and the whole Mortal Instruments trilogy, and I've had all of those for quite some time now, so there's no excuse for me not to read those books. I do like looking at the covers, um, and I just, I like these books, so <laughs> I have them all now. And then finally I'm going to show you either some ARCs that I've received from publishers through my bookstore or that I've traded for with people on the internet. So the first of those is The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk, which I actually almost bought new at a bookstore when I was in California because I was just like so obsessed with the cover. Um, but then I traded for the ARC instead, which worked out perfectly. So I'm excited to read this. I just am ready to be swept away. This seems so magical, even though I have a very limited idea of what it's about. So I honestly couldn't tell you. Then in the same trade, I got The Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa, which I'm excited to read. This seems like a really fun YA fantasy. And then I have a feeling like I showed these books before, but it might have been in a video I decided not to post, um, <laughs> which was my summer TBR, um, which I just didn't get around to editing. And now it's the end of summer, so there is no point. But that is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I'm currently reading Finale, and I'm so excited to get to this because I absolutely love Jax like more than anything. So very excited for this. I have like four copies of this book pre-ordered. So I'm a big Stephanie Garber fan, if you couldn't tell. And then even more excitingly, possibly, I have Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff, which is at this point my most anticipated release of the year. There's only like a three week wait now. And I have the blue arc, which is the Voss family, which I think is the vampire family with like the main horrible <laughs> vampire villain person. Um, don't know how I feel about that. I'm so excited. Again, another book that is as big as my face and I can't wait to read this. Um, I was hoping to read it before I went to school, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen because as of right now, I leave a week from tomorrow. So we'll see <laughs> if I get to this or not. Probably not, but I'm very excited to read this. Then I also traded for Where Dreams Descend by Janela Angelis, and I'm really excited to read this one. It seems like to me it has like Caraval kind of vibes, which is what I look for in a lot of books <laughs> actually. So I'm excited. And it was also comped to Moulin Rouge, which is something that I really want to see. I haven't yet, but it's been compared to things that I love. So I really could not foresee myself not liking this one. Oh, and then the last book I traded for is not an arc, but it is Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand, which I do have an arc of, but this is a very pretty hardcover edition and it's the Whimsify Crate edition. So it came with this cute bookmark, which I really like. And also this letter from Claire inside, if I can open this one handed, I will show you. Here it is. I'm very excited. I haven't read it yet, but Claire Legrand, if you don't know, is one of my favorite authors ever. I love her writing. I love her as a person, just everything. I am a big fan. Um, she's a very big inspiration to me. So I'm very happy to have this book. I haven't read this yet. I wanted to read it this summer, but didn't get to it as with many other books that were in that summer TBR video. <laughs> didn't read most of them, but I have been reading a lot. But uh, this will be good. Maybe like spooky season because it is a YA like horror thriller kind of thing. And with that, those are all of the books, all 75 books that I got this summer. That's not even all of them actually. I have a lot of books in French that I got to practice my French that I'm going to make a separate video about. So I hauled 
those, but those were actually a gift from my dad, so I didn't buy those with my own money, but anyway. And then I also have other haul videos from like earlier, <laughs> pre these 75 books that I need to post, or maybe there's just one. But I went absolutely insane this summer. I don't plan to do it again. I'm going on a book buying ban. This is it for me. I have too many books. I need to read them so I can decide if I want to keep them in my collection or not because my bookshelves are officially full <laughs> to capacity now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it kind of stresses me out having so many unread books now. Like my unread books have, I think, crept up to like close to 200 at this point and it doesn't sit well with me. Um, I think my unread to read ratio is like very rapidly slipping out of my favor. So I really need to get on it and start prioritizing my physical TBR instead of just listening to audiobooks, which is what I've been doing this summer. But yeah, thank you so much for sticking around. If you've seen the whole thing, I would love to know what your most recent book purchase was and I will see you in my next video. Bye!